Okay, so this is the welding robot. Um, it's got a couple of arms on the front. One's uh, the welder. The other one is the grinder and inspection camera. There's uh, some lights on either side so you can illuminate the work from different angles. There's uh, a main navigation camera that's in the middle here. Um, but it's all covered in oil right now because I'm an idiot. The arms go up and down and they articulate in and out and side to side. Uh, there's quite a, a large working area in between the robot. Um, got the covers off right now because I'm doing some work to it. So let's give you a quick little, little, uh, I don't know, <laughs> show you what's inside anyway. So here's uh, sort of the power supply unit and uh, a lot of the hydraulics and solenoids and relays and junk. So these these relays here control most of the solenoids and some of the lighting. Um, the drive motors there. The motor is re or the machine is reversible. You can flip it upside down so it drives on top or bottom. It knows its orientation so it uh, corrects directions and arm offset corrections and everything so it just sort of happens you don't really have to worry about it uh, these little these little guys right here are the outriggers they deploy and either wedge the machine into place if it's in the uh, welding down position or um, lift the machine up to the top platen and wedge it into place if it's in the welding up position so those are, are air actuated Here's the electronics section. Here's the, the computers, motor controllers, some more power supplies. Um, it's a whole big mess of crap in there. It's really busy, actually. It was a huge pain in the ass to do, but that, that's what it is. So, um, yeah, let's have a look at the back. So the there's an umbilical that's about 30 feet long that runs out to the welders and everything. Um, the umbilical connects to the back of the machine. I, I'm just using some quick connects. We've got uh, argon, air, power, um, the, the welder remote, and the one on the bottom is welding power. So it's just a, just a standard small twist lock. So you've got your, your wire right here. There is a cover for this, and that blue cable is not normally there. I'm just I've got it plugged in because the internet's faster that way. So, um, yeah, wire feed takes a normal. Uh, was that two pound spool? So that's that. So I've got uh, 035 solid wire in there right now. That feeds in through this here. There's a little plastic manifold we made up to inject argon in. Um, we're using a piece of, uh, what the hell is that, 3 8 uh, hose, air hose. We put the, the MIG wire liner in there. This can go back and forth and sort of move back and forth and it hits this plastic slider to keep it constrained, whether it's in the, the upside down or right side up position. So as the uh, welder is extending and moving its arm, that, that sort of um, goes in and out. Um, so here is the user interface. So when you, you can log in through your phone and through your computer or whatever, it doesn't really matter. So what you see is on the right, you've got the inspection camera. On the left, you've got your navigation camera. So if we want to, let's say, uh, I'm just inspecting my dirty old shop floor, all that old dirty cracked concrete. So you've got a crosshairs which are always at right angles to the machine. And you'll see that uh, that angle corrects as the arm moves. So let's see here, let's go to 4500 theta um, on the grinding arm. Okay, so let's just... Uh, so as the arm approaches 90 degrees, that those crosshairs straighten out to 90. So there we go, we're at 90.8 degrees right now. Crosshairs are mostly straight. The X and Y positions, the Z's all right there. 
We can turn on some lights if we want to have a better look at the old uh, concrete there. Let's have a look from the left light. Oh yeah, there you go. See all kinds of little cracks and crevices. So have a look at the right light. Yep. Ooh, look terrible. Good. Okay, so um, that's with the with that arm extended in the 90 degree position now. So just retract that. You can have a look. And believe it or not, the best thing I found to, I mean, we can change the tools, but the best thing I found so far is a die grinder with the uh, Cubitron 2 discs. Tried a bunch of different stuff. That's easy and it works. So, a little slow. It's about 20 minutes per weld, depending on the size of the weld, I suppose. So let's send this, let's do a little test. Let's send this out to uh, one meter. So distance, a thousand. So let's hit enter, hit enter, sorry, hit enter. So the machine is, uh, let's just pretend that's crawling into the press. That goes up, excuse me, goes out, parks right in front of its uh, little test piece of steel there. Great, great. So then um, hopefully I got this welding script done correctly and uh, the instructions in, as to uh, what it actually should weld. Hopefully I got my argon and everything too. Anyway, let's try it. Welding toggle. Oh yeah, there's the argon. So it's just coming out right now and doing its little dance. So that's pass one. And that's pass two. That is pass three of the simulated repair. Now the welder's just getting out of the way and it'll retract completely in a second here. Let's go down and have a look at what it did. So I tried a, a, a push welding, uh, welding bead there here just now and uh, seemed to do really good pulling earlier. So hopefully this worked out. Oh yeah, not bad. Not great. I mean, the, the poles earlier were just friggin' gorgeous, but that's, that'll work. I mean, that's it's a perfectly acceptable repair. Okay. And then the, uh, similarly, I'm not, we're not going to do it because it takes too long, but the grinder comes out and grinds that smooth. That's, uh, that. And then we drive out of the press. like so. All automatic. Ta-da!